Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are joined by Tikender Singh Pawar, former Deputy Mayor of Shimla and is also a candidate from Shimla Urban Constituency for the CPIM in upcoming Himachal Pradesh Vidhan Sabha elections. Welcome to News Click, Tikender. Thanks. Sir. So first, first of all, let's start with what is the vision of left vis-a-vis -vis these elections? Uh, CPIM is fighting eleven seats. Okay, so you mean I mean the vision for the state? Yes. Okay, so you see, Himachal has a very uh, interesting characteristic as far as the development of the state is concerned. Because we were a predominantly backward state uh, uh, with uh, uh, very low, you know, uh, production base uh, as far as industries are concerned. And that's when we got uh, statehood in 1971. Uh, so what is the model that should have been adopted? Uh, Congress, in fact, there was a movement uh, down below which was led by the communists, uh, that was the main, I mean, land reforms movement, uh, but it was completely taken over, I could say, I can say hijacked by the Congress right. and the then Dr. Vais Parmar. Right. And he played a very pivotal agenda, uh, which I can, uh, I, I, I can mark was literally left of uh, uh, center, center. Um, complete uh, left of left of center. Uh, where uh, you know la I mean, large scale land forms took place, at the same time we had a huge de development of social infrastructure. Now, can you imagine, Pranjal, in the nineteen eighties we were hundred percent electrified. Every village, and if you visit Himachal, you'll find that the, the the density is very low. Some house would be a kilometer away, just one single house. Even there, those poles were erected, and you know the electricity was taken. At the same time, you had education, you had health infrastructure. This all continued till the 80s, 85, till 90s, I would say, when we just swung to the what we call the new liberal order, yeah. or where the FRBMs, the Fiscal Responsibility Emergency Management Act, and see the political repercussion. That is very interesting that has happened. The political repercussion is so you developed a very strong social infrastructure uh, with uh, the, with a very strong stimulus and support of the state, and of course which was given by the center, there was hardly any private investment. So no private capital came. They didn't even have the capacity to do that. So it was the center that really helped the state. But post 85, you see, once the state started withdrawing, you know, once we just swung to another form of developmental model, you'll find after in 1985, every government lost. So no successive, you know, uh, I mean, so even stalwarts like Veer Badr Singh or P.K. Dhumal, they couldn't repeat their governments back. Right. Those uh, issues still remain pivotal. So what are these issues? The issues uh, are that the people look this at the state government as one of the major investors and one of the major areas that are going to help them out. Right. That are going to help them uh, out in ameliorating their problems. For example, unemployment is a huge problem. But just, let me just cite one very small example. When I said that we were 100% electrified in 1980s or 85, uh, guess the number of uh, people that were employed in in the electricity department. There were just 6 lakh subscribers, maybe 6, 6.5 lakh subscribers, but we had some 23,000 workforce. workforce. Uh, sorry, 45,000 workforce. Now we have 23 lakh subscribers, but the workforce has gone down to 15,000. So it has declined it while has the declined. demand has increased That's threefold. That's the neoliberal yes. concept, you know. So you have to reduce your fiscal deficit. How do you reduce a fiscal deficit? And that's how the FRBM, I mean, I'm, I mean, enforce uh, all those uh, uh, MOUs and all that you sign. Uh, I mean, focus that the fiscal deficit should not increase more than three percent of your state GDP. So what is the way out? And the center said we will not give you a grant if you do not. The way out was. Do not fill your vacant posts. And that's why I find, forget about the 1990s, uh, you know, baseline. Even today, if you find, uh, there are more than one lakh uh, uh, Vacan vacancies, vacancies lying in different departments. So social infrastructure is the major issue here. That's one. The second thing is, uh, as I told you, because, you know, the huge infrastructure once you create, that also creates a middle class. That also creates consciousness amongst the people. Uh, post 2004, uh, you know, when uh, I mean, all those who are employed, and still we have a large number of people who are employed in government departments, health, education, electricity board, uh, I think the number would be around 3 lakh. Uh, so post 2004, all are under the NPS. NPS. And now actually they are, so you know, all that glossy picture came uh, after 1990s that, you know, they, your money will go to 
uh, to the stock market and then you'll have an inflated yes. pension stuff and you'll have a rise in, in pension. Now they're realizing someone who's drawing a salary of 80,000 rupees lands up getting a pension of not more than 4,000 rupees, right. whereas the person should have got 40,000 40, rupees. 40, yeah. rupees. So, the, so that's a major issue. And it's, it's not that it's come out of the blue, but they fought down and the government actually completely mishandled it. Right. The BJP is completely averse to it. And uh, they, uh, I mean, they targeted the people, uh, and of course, uh, I mean, they, they took it head on. The, the BJP government. So there's tremendous, tremendous furor if you just talk to the government employees against uh, against the government and on this uh, important issue of. And third, I think also what is important because the state has, as I told you, is a very characteristic state. So forget about the communists. I can even tell you some of the Congress leaders. You know, even Dr. Parmar, I mean, who hijacked the communist movement altogether, I, I can say. When he retired, he went back to his home in a bus. So, you know, he had nothing. <laughs> so, you know, so that corruption was not seen here. Uh, politics was still a kind of... Uh, uh, clean you know, politics. Yeah, no, not clean. You know, something that you have to serve. Sure. And even Madame Stokes, I mean, uh, from, from Tio, she had a very clean image. Uh, likewise, Gaur Saab in Congress. I'm talking about Congress <laughs> leaders, okay? Gaur Saab, whenever he used to contest from Kullu, he used to lose a part of his land. Right. Now people gain land once, once they... So, so you know, people are, are actually uh, easily... They, they can easily understand the kind of corruption, the kind of money that is flowing in. And it's not not just one, but it's it's like even in the BGP, uh, in, in Congress. So I think that's also a very major issue. People are looking at people who would be, uh, of course, uh, on these ma major issues. But also, corruption is, is a way. And we've seen how the police recruitment scam right. uh, was highlighted. And, uh, and of course, they had to just get rid of the paper. So, Tegan, just going back to where you had started from that, how communists played an important role in the movement and made sure that Sim Shimla, uh, Himachal had uh, social security and all that. Communists have been there in the movement throughout. They're always on the streets. We've witnessed various movements regarding apple farmers, regarding students. But still, the presence of the communists in the assembly has been limited to one since last assembly elections and there was there was no candidate before that. So how do you see CPM as an alternative force right now in Himachal? Okay, so let me just uh, uh, put this question in three phases. The first thing is, actually the earlier communists uh, they were, they were, they were, I mean, they were there in the assembly, I think we had six or seven MLAs. Right. That was the undivided communist party. Right. So post-64, the biggest loss I think the communists got because of the split in the communist movement. And then the new form of, uh, you know, the communist movement that you're talking about is like post-1980s. Right. Okay. So this is, po this is the, uh, this is the manifestation of SFI. So, right. you know, the SFI's formation took place in 1980s. And we've been winning the elections in the universities. So, you know, this whole a bunch of people coming from uh, that period, I mean, right. be it Singha or be it Kashmir Thakur, be it Professor Ganjam uh, So, and of course, many others, I mean, not just to name a few. So, uh, so you know, so, so they still represent that student <laughs> knack. They've right. not been able to really, uh, I mean, they means that we have not been able to go back to our peasant base. Uh, it's only recently that uh, uh, some uh, breakthrough has taken place in in the farmers' movement and also in some of the uh, workers' agitations, particularly in the hydropower. But this is insufficient if you talk about uh, taking Himachal as a whole. Right. Himachal is very wide. Himachal is very diverse. Uh, of course, I mean diversity. I mean, I mean, you just go across the state and you come to know the kind of diversity languages. Uh, so I think uh, to view uh, left as an alternative right now would be too premature, and right. too utopian as, as right. of now. Yes, they have presence because you know because of the students' movement, because of SFI, we are everywhere. This transformation will take a little more time with the way things are precipitating, right. the way things are unfolding. Uh, it's just that I think we as left we have to go back to the people and try to just uh, build movements which are pan-state. We're still restricted to building movements uh, limited to particular regions. regions. You know? right. So we are more of that regional stuff, right. not uh, a state right. as of now. So it'll take some time. Uh, so let's, sure. let's, let's now come to your constituency, which you are fighting elections for, Shimla Urban. 
what are the key issues that you are pinning your hope on because as we know shimla urban has been uh, it, it's a center of himachal politics yeah. right now and we have seen water problems here we have seen road transport problems here you have been a deputy mayor yourself of the city so how where, where are your hopes right now vis-a-vis -vis shimla see i mean i'm really enjoying this election for the first time in really and you won't believe pranjal because simla is completely pedestrianized so uh, and if you just look at my watch so uh, it measures my footsteps so right. by the end of the day i i finish walking around 24 25 kilometers right and this is this is you know this is not a uh, i'm trudge up and down you know climb stairs up so i'm really enjoying this because of three major reasons one is there's nothing against us Right. so so you know so the people are really fond when fond of us when when we visit them the second thing is that the five years of the bjp triple engine you know the municipal corporation the mla who was also the minister and the the central government they have actually uh, put the city on the head instead of putting the city on the feet you know right. uh, i'll like try to explain that and the third thing is that people are also comparing our work when we were in the municipal corporation leading uh, that institution and the five years so they're saying yeah you were damn honest whatever you've done you brought the smart city you brought that water project but they have completely completely messed up this town mm -hmm. and i think the primary reason is why they did so is because we went to the people so there is no people's interaction the interface between people and governance was completely missing in the right. city in the last five years. So actually, people's so participation was, was not there. completely missing, or completely absent. Also, because of the reason, because uh, uh, BJP has a very strong nexus with the uh, with the contract. Contract. So most of the contracts. Take for example the smart city. I was instrumental into writing the smart city, I and mean, of course the financials we worked out with one of our former finance secretaries, Mr. Baldi. And then we had one additional commissioner. So three of us actually we were very instrumental into writing that smart city, and we always had uh, this impression that water would be the first thing that has to be addressed. Right. But the people said no. We went back to the people. They said it's mobility. Now, if you see, Shimla had never seen traffic jams. Now you are stuck in a traffic jam for two hours. Right. and the smart city was to address this how are we going to address this here apart from horizontal mobility it's vertical mobility which is extremely important because if you see the altitude difference you go to a place called ramnagar focused on widening the roads uh, and you know erecting those retaining walls where massive money was spent and can you believe the smart city was uh, money was spent on uh, uh, i think uh, uh, one crore was spent on planting flower uh, pots in the forest right. you have ever seen or heard that you have a forest a beautiful dense forest and you plant flower uh, you know flower pots there so they have ridiculed the entire concept and people are realizing this at the same time uh, whatever was been we were able to do for example on solid waste management we were able to reach out to 99% 95 to 99% of the houses they have tried kind of dismantle that right. uh, so that's that's major another thing which uh, which they have not been able to handle at all is uh, you know this was something i don't know how how uh, um, how, how is it continuing in punjab but uh, you know the whole question of uh, drugs right it's it's a very major issue in the town uh, peop um, the parents won't come to you but i have seen because i have been visiting the houses where mothers talk about their children they don't want to come in the forefront but they say will what what is the future of their children for the simple reason that many of the uh, young bright boys and girls have been addicted to that and in a recent survey we found out that the major reason the primary reason for this is unemployment right so it's quite integrated you know Uh, so so yeah when we are going back to the people uh, i'm i'm enjoying the campaign but at the same time it's very frustrating also right uh, because uh, you know the issues that are coming up are really easy so since we are running short of time yeah. concluding remarks on your seat and overall the himachal pradesh elections why do you think I as think you have the said this is going to lose it's for sure uh, 
I mean, come what may, the, the kind of money that they're going to pump in. And the second thing is, which, which the people have to realize, they're also eyeing some of the Congress people. Okay. You know, they say even, I mean, the Chief Minister has been openly proclaiming. In fact, it's an admission of their defeat. They're saying that even if we do not win, we will form the government. What does that mean? So, you know, there's certain people who would, uh, uh, like they've been able to, right. I mean, they've been able to just win over one of the important Congress functionaries recently. Mr. Harsh Mahajan, right. who was like an ideologue for some of the Congress, right. yeah, uh, uh, people who are, who are my age or uh, my contemporary, you can say. So uh, it's it's a very interesting thing. So we'll have to keep vigilant. The people will have to keep vigilant, not to elect those people. And I think the left um, is definitely going to have a, a better presence. Business. We should jump from one. We were one. Definitely, we are going to go. When we going to get that seat. But uh, I mean, I can galvanize the mood of the people. Yeah. They are definitely, they are wanting more because, you know, the five years has seen, I mean, all those issues, for example, the old pension scheme, which is very important, a very major issue here. Uh, so uh, they've seen how the left has fought. And uh, of course, the, uh, the wavering stand of the Congress. Well, in 2003, if you just dig some of the videos, you'll find that the most ardent advocate was Congress. But now Congress is realizing that, you know, uh, uh, this is a very major issue. And that's why in two states they've already uh, uh, gone ahead, even the Ahmadi party in Punjab. It's a very major issue. So the concluding remarks is the BJP has to go, it is going. Uh, people have to keep vigil that uh, some of the people who get elected shouldn't just jump over, jump. so elect good people. And I think the left is going to definitely increase its strength. Thanks a lot, Tikinder, for giving us your time and we wish you all the best. Thank you. That was Tikinder Singh Pawar, uh, former Deputy Mayor of Shimla and a candidate of the CPIM for Shimla Urban Constituency. Keep watching News Click for more such interviews and our coverage of Himachal elections. Thank you.